folks. Wow! Woo! Woo! It's another episode of Draw Bomb, the show that's that's top of the charts. It's everyone's talking about it. Your kids, your kids' kids, grandma's kids, who's you? Or no, wait, it's your parents. It's everyone! I kind of lost track of what I was doing halfway through that spiel. What, what, yeah, what are we doing? I did too. I, was, I, was, uh, I think this is drop, drop bomb. Oh, that's drop, right. Drop yeah. Okay. Hi. Right. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um. I think it's French. I think it's like le drop boom. Drop boom. Le drop boom. Um. Hello. 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 It's another episode of that thing we insist on doing. Um. <laughs> Even though we've been asked to stop. <laughs> We've gotten many cease and desist letters from many government officials. Um, it's another episode. How are you guys? How is it going? Welcome. <laughs> What's up with you, Brian? I'll answer. I'm doing great. Great. Cool. How is Things your good. How is your Turkey Day weekend? It was great. I did thanksgiving on thanksgiving and then i did another thanksgiving yesterday and very nice i just love thanksgiving food i'm a real slob i do too it makes me happy today i'll I tell you a, what sorry go ahead you go i ahead. did a thing where i i made a turkey sandwich with leftover turkey and i put stuffing on it mm. and i'm sharing my shame with everybody um but i also don't regret it because it was good I don't see any reason they to be. Call it Thanksgiving sandwich. I don't see why you would be ashamed. That sounds fine to me. That sounds downright pedestrian. There's a, a cal caloric intake, though. I in mean, a sandwich like that. Look, one of the ingredients in the sandwich was more bread, like inside the sandwich. I mean, look. Okay, it's a sandwich. It's going to get you where you need to go. What's worse, a sandwich with more bread in it or a, a sandwich like with a bunch of bacon and cheese, you know? That's true. Okay, so what you're what I'm hearing is there's room for improvement. I can make the sandwich better with some bacon and some yes. cheese. Yes. Yeah, everything can be improved with bacon and cheese. I mean, if you ask me. Right. Heard. Heard. Um gosh, you know, I I have to admit I too celebrated Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving, but we had our second Thanksgiving first, and that was earlier. Garage Thanksgiving. Second Correct. Thanksgiving first. Yeah, we have our second Thanksgiving first, because that's when we get together with the whole family. Huh? That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, well, How is it it's, first? How is it the second Thanksgiving if it's first? Well, because Ray, first Thanksgiving's on Thanksgiving. No. First is it is about order. Is it? So first Thanksgiving is the first one. But it's not really Thanksgiving. So it's more like it's more like a, a Thanksgiving scrimmage. So you're about you're a holiday date purist. Like it's you're you're not celebrating Thanksgiving if it's not on the day. Well, it's just it's it's just not like the day. Like here's the thing. If you're celebrating the holiday like on a different day and it's the only celebration you're doing for that holiday because like the timing just doesn't work out otherwise like i get that you're just sort of rescheduling the holiday if you're having this the th the holiday like after again because of like the schedule just didn't match up sure that's that's the holiday just on a delay but if you celebrate the holiday and then you also celebrate the holiday on the day of the holiday then one's just a practice and the other one's the actual you know what i mean practice we're talking practice. We're talking practice. The playoffs. You want you want to talk about the playoffs? <laughs> All right. Well, I won't say I agree with you, but I respect your opinions. All right. And this is the hill I will die on. I have died on <laughs> it. I am a ghost. Whoa. You look you look good for a dead guy. Thanks. You it's a lot of makeup. Good. What is what's your skincare routine? Oh, okay. Yeah, like it's just a lot of makeup on top of like this uncorporeal self. Um, sure, I didn't know you could apply makeup to uh, translucent, whatever it is. Well, first you gotta do like the transient curse, which then makes you physical, 
and then you that's that's once you activate the transient curse you got like a limited amount of time um what's your unfinished business uh just this show this show right we're doing right here uh, oh okay yeah so one of these episodes when it, you've, you're gonna feel like satisfied and you're just gonna go into the light mid-show <laughs> yes i like to think of it more as like the day where you like this is the last episode we'll be like bye and it'll be like the ending of star wars where it's like on my jedi form and ghost form <laughs> and like i'm next to obi-wan kenobi and like for some reason there was the old darth vader but they've like replaced it in the modern versions with like anakin skywalker waving as a ghost like and... an ugly cgi uh, yeah ghost. exactly i like to think that but yeah, like these fictional characters will be the ghosts, like rooting you on. Exactly. I will be. I will take my place. Popping off a little bit amongst here. the Jedi Let's Council. We should we talk to them? Pay attention to this. I think we. Um. Yeah, I guess we should. Gosh. All right. Let's see what we got. Uh, Lotus Clock says. I got an ad on my way here confirming that the season of incessant big sales corporate stores advertisements has started. That oh it has. Um, big 30% holiday sale at Chapman & Newton's Emporium of Bomb Men Artworks. Exactly. It's 30% off from the normal price off. of free. So I think yes. we pay you. <laughs> yeah, I think at that point we we give you the drawing and then we give you like a five and we're like, please don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll lose work if people find out I've been doing this. My um, reputation is riding on this. Bubba Rocket says every year those ads get dumber and dumber. Through, I don't I even know what I'm watching anymore. There's this weird thing where like the people making the ads are out of touch, and they're like trying to like tap into like like Gen Z like TikTok humor. So it's just like this weird like yeah stupid. I'm not saying that that humor is stupid necessarily. You know that, that it's stupid else when it's in the hands that, of like saying, corporate shills. It's it's not being done by somebody who understands it. Yeah, at least uh, that makes them just like so annoying. It's just like random like chaos every commercial. Yeah. They're like just trying to like I think they're trying to like grab your attention by doing weird shit. So you're just like, oh, did you see that one? That was weird as fuck. I blame Geico. They made they had yeah, funny they, ads. And then they fucked th it up for everybody. They did. Although their ads are still funny, I will say Geico. I, I saw a Geico ad recently, and I forget what the premise was, but I remember seeing it and being like, "Man, that's pretty funny, Geico." I, I want to hate on the commercial, but I also have to respect the writers who made this funny. They do an okay job, but it's just everybody's trying to do what they're doing, and it's yeah, annoying. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What what do we got here? Uh. Bell Rocket says stuffing is the best Thanksgiving dish. I totally agree with you. My favorite as well. I'm Great. a big fan of the mashed potatoes, the yams, which are a different type it. of potatoes, and yes. the ham. Are the yams you usually have like like candied or do you just like them every way? I like them every which way, but loose. And um, at the garage Thanksgiving, they're candied, but uh, you know, yeah. I, I'm totally okay with them not being candied. I, I just like sweet potatoes i think they're delicious they're they're delicious um lotus box brandon is drawing top cat yo and jim davis style that's right oh yeah i guess because he has one eye it does kind that's of look true that yeah way. it's a little <laughs> clock character that. um yeah okay yeah business father here as well welcome everyone welcome 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 uh, um Bubble Rock says, Gen Z humor is funny Gen Z humor viewed through a boomer kaleidoscope is dumb exactly that's yeah. exactly it um, you're right. The ending of Star Wars Episode Six. You guys are true bros. You got that right. You got that right. We are bros. Um, you know what's funny is, uh, speaking of the holiday of incessant ads and corporatization, um, I was at the restaurant store with the family today, just grabbing food and stuff. Um, and restaurant store. Yeah, it's like a store, you get like a membership and it's like they sell shit in like giant containers and in bulk and it's like, you know, the idea uh, is that you work at a restaurant we have one and... Here. It's, ours here is called Gordon Food Service, but it's probably similar or... It's, exactly yeah, the same. I, I, it's probably exactly... Almost like the, all the restaurants get their stuff from it around here. And it's like stocks items that are like, oh yeah, this is for a restaurant, you know? Yeah, okay, yeah. I understand. Yeah. 
Um, th here they just call it the restaurant store. Like they're not even like oh, joking around. <laughs> not even pulling any punches. I respect the straightforwardness. I'm like, well, this is what I'm here sure. for anyway. So yeah. Let's not, you know, let's not fuck around. Just tell me what you are. Um. So yeah, we uh, we were there and they were playing. <laughs> the music on the radio was weird because they were playing Christmas music. I should look up how Garfield looks too if I'm gonna draw Garfield. Um, but the weird thing was like, they were playing specifically like country versions of Christmas music. So it was all very twangy and you know, people were doing like runs and stuff like that. And, uh, but it was also like weird cause it, it sounded like that a noise gate. Like they were broadcasting it off of like maybe somebody's phone onto a microphone and the microphone had like a noise uh. gate so that, so like, there was one song where it was just like, so like, you know, you got like a music going like, blim, 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 silent night, silence, holy night, silence. <laughs> it's like, very so strange. So like the, the background music wasn't loud enough to make it through, just the voice. Sometimes the background music would make it through. It was very, it was very dependent on the song, but it was weird because like you'd get like if the song had like a, a slow, gentle fade out at the end of it, the song would just be like, you know, sleep in heavenly peace, and then like bling, 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 and it would just like it would just cut out like so immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh very st like startling. You, just, you uh you should, you know, you were trying, you thought he was bluffing when he said Silent Night. He, he, he was second he meant it god damn it yeah acapella <laughs> <laughs> see i'm looking at the chat again he's got 18 horrible limbs with hundreds of eyes all over them please don't disrespect garfield cameo by drawing him any other way <laughs> <laughs> or, or garfield cannon why did i say cameo um biblically accurate garfield <laughs> That's right. Oh man, I should definitely draw a biblically accurate Garfield. Um, so Brandon, it's possible. It's possible that Jesus was an orange cat. We don't. This know. is true. Sure. I've seen some really yes, cool yeah. like three D renders of like biblically accurate angel and angels, and they're all it's all very funny how extra people get with them, and I, I love it. I mean, the Bible itself got pretty pretty extra. <laughs> it sure did. It's description of angels. They were like basically monsters. <laughs> they were that like if I saw like everyone in the Bible is like, oh, look, an angel. I am so at peace. And it was just like, no, I would be screaming my ass off if I saw yeah. like <laughs> it makes sense why they always start with, hey, don't be afraid. <laughs> like, yeah. I understand. I've seen myself. Yeah. It's disgusting. I there's know this, there's this like I had no uh, say in it. <laughs> look, man, I'm I'm just I'm, I didn't My make boss myself. Did this to me. There's like this uh, elk god in this game called Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, and like it always oh, like yeah. comes at you and it says, "Do not be afraid, child." And it has like a very modulated, like creepy <laughs> voice. And I like <laughs> it's uh, it, you know I think it's definitely trying to uh, you know sort of harken back to those biblically accurate angels. And then when it opens its robes, there's just like a bunch of eyes and like mouths and stuff inside of its chest, and it's like, oh yeah, it sounds like a. Sounds like an angel. I just imagine that an voice accompanying like an, an angel being like, do not be afraid. Be not afraid. Did you ever see uh, the 90s show Touched by an Angel? I actually didn't. No, I've never seen a single episode. You did though, right? I, I've seen a good amount because my family and the people, my you know, friends of my family, like, I was, I was raised very Christian, so like a lot of Stuff, stuff I associated with was religious at the time, uh, but that show's wacky. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wacky show. I just imagine uh, like just Seventh like, Heaven, but in a courtroom. Isn't that kind of what it's like? No, it has nothing to do with a courtroom. Oh, okay. I don't know why I imagine a courtroom. Probably because that Family Guy joke. Yeah, that's exactly why. Yep. Um, where they're like, show on the doll where the angel touched you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I'm laughing for some other reason, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's it's a wacky show. It's basically just like somebody's like life has gone off the rails, and 
and then uh, these these three characters that play angels in the show. I think there's only three, and they just show up as a normal person in their life, and they try to get them like back on track. And then at the end, when they like finally, um, oh, oh but we got a word ban. Oh shit! For the <laughs> while trying to explain the show. Well, okay. Try and so, do anyways, it without here, I'm gonna get the timer going. All right, ready? Five minutes on the clock. Don't say that word. Try not to. Uh, so they show up and they're like trying to get these people to see the the, the oh fuck, trying to get people to <laughs> to be better. Um, and then at the very end when they like reveal themselves, it always happened the same way. It was it was like a big uh like floodlight just shines down on. the on top of them and they're like i'm an angel of god and then the person's like oh uh and then they like start crying oh fuck they start crying and they're better people also there's two normal angels and then there's one that's an angel of death and oh. so every time he shows up it means you're about to die <laughs> oh no every times that other two angels are trying to like write get, like get somebody to be a better person and then all of a sudden he he just shows up and they they like start crying they're like no no i needed more time <laughs> oh no it's a wacky show is the person who dies like somebody who's wait sorry. um are they uh somebody who's irredeemable or is it somebody who's actually trying to make i think it's more like i don't i don't think they're being punished with death I think it's more like, sorry, it's your time, it turns out. Okay. Interesting. And he's just like, just a white guy, just shows up and he just looks like a normal bland guy, but... <laughs> Every time they see him, they're Angel like, oh no! Ah! Yeah, <laughs> well, that sounds goofy. The wacky show. Sounds the wacky. wacky. Show. Uh, oh yeah, so it looks like... We got redeemed the prompt to punch me, so why wh oh. why do you do this to me? Why? Do they not like That's you? That's the wrong sound. <laughs> the wrong, wow, what is your face made out of? Oh no, okay. He's had enough. No more. No. He's dying. Someone needs to stop this. Someone redeem a channel point for no more punching. You're killing him! You're killing him! Can't you see you're killing him? Oh god. Ian, no! Stop! Stop it! Oh god! Uh, is that enough? Why would you do this? Oh! There's blood everywhere! I can see him smiling in the corner of the screen. It's broken. He's giving him brain damage. He doesn't even know what he's doing anymore. Oh. Yeah! Alright, I guess I'll do the show by myself. Lotus Clock says, uh, he's a ghost. He was dead this whole time anyway. Oh, yeah. All right. I guess it's fine, though. What can we say about Ian? Um, uh, shoot. There's gotta be something. Wow. So, like, wow. 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 he's a guy. He was a guy. Um, he died like he lived, getting punched repeatedly in the face. Business father says sorry for killing Ian. It's all right, we forgive you. Anyways, moving on. Oh. He's back. <sighs> it's a miracle. Oh my god, I just had the. Wait. You said the what? I just had a worse dream. Um, <laughs> I had a dream where Chris Pratt was Garfield. Um, oh, sorry to break it to you. That's true. Oh god, are you serious? Yeah, he's everything. <laughs> no! No! Not again! Don't worry, we'll stop him. We'll put a stop to Chris Pratt, I promise. Oh, come on! Okay, so what's the next Chris Pratt character that you expect him to be, or the next one that would hurt? What would hurt your feelings the most if you found mm. out he was going to be voicing something else? What would offend you? Because Garfield, like, is such a, like... It's more a product than anything else anymore. Like all that thing's yeah. been 
wrung dry. There's no more heart or anything left in that. I'm, it's, I'm like, you could have somebody could come out and tell me that a computer has been making Garfield comics for the last like 20 years, and I wouldn't even be surprised. There's yeah, Garfield left. is essentially like a corporate robot at this point, and has yeah. been since maybe like the 2000s, something like that. Um. So I don't hmm. care that Chris Pratt is going to be him, but it is just kind of funny because it's like. All right, mm. we, did Bill, we had Bill Murray last, and now we're doing Chris Pratt. Wait, Bill Murray, at least, like, his voice... He sounded like him, or at least like the old 90s cartoon. Yeah. Which I think is a good voice for him, that kind of, like... I don't know, it's like, unimpressed. Garfield voice. Uh, Timer's up, by the way, for the word the, so we can say it again. Oh. Um... The, 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 the. So rejoice. A Lotus Clock says I'm going to be replaced by Chris Pratt. Is yeah, I'm trying to think it? of like what character is like. You know what? Okay, I got it. Shrek. Chris Pratt will be the next Shrek. <laughs> and he just does his normal voice. Yeah, he just uh, he doesn't do get the Scottish accent. Donkey, get out of my swamp. Yeah, that'd um, be a bummer. But, uh, yeah, that would be a bummer. Um, but I could see that happening. Like, just, you know, the next... Like, it's gotta be... He, okay, it's either Shrek, the Geico Gecko, or... A min, like, a minion who's got, like, a lead role goose. in a movie. Could be the Aflac Goose. Aflac. Um... I, uh... What... Uh, okay, here's... I'm trying to think of something that would offend me. What if they did made it... They... He'll be the next Captain like, Kirk. Bill Watterson dies, and the next day they make a. They See, I thought of that distinct make possibility. Make a Hobbs cartoon, and he does Hobbs. I thought of that distinct possibility, and I if, it intentionally didn't say it because I didn't want to conjure it's, that into the ether. But I had the exact scary same to thought. Joke about. Yeah, I had the exact same thought though. Um, he's gonna be flow from progressive. That's right. <laughs> um. Who's who's like a like somewhat beloved? I mean, I don't I don't consider Garfield beloved. Like he's he's fine. He's whatever. But um, you know, he's sort of in the he's like been in the cultural zeitgeist. Hmm. Shrek is like my best guest. In all honesty. Shrek would be a terrible one. Also, maybe Link from Legend of Zelda. Oh, that okay there. That because they are making a Legend of Zelda movie, and it is being made by the same studio that made Mario. Isn't it live action? It is. Is it? Isn't it? I thought it I, was. I could be wrong. I don't know. I just assume that every Nintendo it movie was. will. If, if the Nintendo movie it money makes trains, more sense for it to be animated. Yeah. There's been like so many like since the dawn of like the internet and like the prolifer prolif 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 proliferation of internet videos. I feel like people have been doing like live action Zelda movies, fan movies, trailers, etc. Since like the beginning of time. Um. And I just, it never looks good. Like, no matter how competent or, like, high of a budget they put into it, it just looks weird. Um, yeah. Maybe the best iteration of that was that fake trailer IGN did, like, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. That was a good one. Um, that was a good, that was a good, uh, father good says Chris Pratt is going to be Pillsbury Doughboy, and it'll just be naked Chris Pratt with, like, with like a little chef hat on. <laughs> oh, hey, quit touching my belly. They like, they like touch. I'm just trying to make crescent rolls. Stop touching my belly, please. I don't they like touch it when you touch my belly. And he's just like, hey, stop it, okay? Stop it. We don't touch my belly. Um, He's going to be a Ghostbuster, is what it's going to be. He's going to oh, be a Ghostbuster. Oh, God, I'm surprised Ghostbuster. that hasn't happened yet, actually. Because they got Paul Rudd in there, but like they have they have a new Ghostbusters movie coming out where it's like Bill Murray okay. and all the old Ghostbusters. So what they're gonna do is the, there's gonna be a, a a changing of the guard. There's gonna be a passing of the torch, and they'll it'll be Paul Rudd and like he'll have like Chris Pratt in there as like some guy who's like probably the one who's like oh, I've seen ghost. He's like the one who's like kind of uh, like a, a veteran of the thing, but he's never been an actual Ghostbuster. He's just like really into ghosts and, and, and stuff, you know, like the, the character who's kind of like been there, done that, but they're still kind of like new to the team. Um, he's going to be that guy. Uh, John Hamm too. I mean, John Hamm would be, I would be okay with that. I like John Hamm. Um, but um at least i have no reason to hate him at least <laughs> yeah that's kind of how i feel like 
I don't know. I um, liked him on Curb Your Enthusiasm. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. Uh, give me every funny hot dad. I have ghosts everywhere. I need help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please save me, hot ghost dads. Um. Oh, okay. I got another one. Indiana Jones reboot. Chris Pratt. That wouldn't even be surprising. No, not at and all. At this point, that's so. I mean, the franchise itself is pretty bastardized, so it's kind of like who cares yeah, they've, what they do with it at it, this point. It's been dragged it's not, through the muck already. Okay, here's here's what we make remake Back to the Future and Chris oh, Pratt boy. is Marty McFly. That would get me. I'd yeah. be a little steamed. I'd be a hot little potato about that. What's like an animated movie from like the '90s to the early 2000s that like they need to desperately reboot? Like Fievel, Chris Pratt is Fievel, who goes west. <laughs> they, just, they just put a mouse. It's, I guess it'd be animated, right? It would just be him dressed yeah. like a mouse. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> he's got like the weird face. Um, um guess what they'll I remake said? Iron Man, the, the Iron Giant, and he'll be the robot. Yeah, he'll be the robot in Iron Giant, right? Um. Oh, Lotus Clock says they said something earlier. Uh, ever seen the Light of Courage animation? No, that is a great Zelda fan film. I'm not sure I have. I saw this one hilarious Zelda fan film. It was like freshman year in college, and it was like, again, YouTube was like just sort of like becoming a thing. Like it had been out since like, you know, however long it had. Like YouTube was out like 2005, I would say, something like that. And originally people used it to like upload clips of like TV shows. Um, and it was like stuff like that. Yeah, and it was just, like, starting to sort of get, like, used as, like, a place to share, like, actual creative works, you know? Like, people's, like, creations. Um, and uh, somebody made, like, a Legend of Zelda fan film. And it was so funny because, first of all, it was, it was like, you know, it was kind of low budget because what could you do? It was, like, a bunch of people making a fan film. Like, that's, that's what it is. But, like, Link is, like, he, like, is growing up. He's learning how to become Link. Um, and, uh, it's, like, it's his first encounter with, like, a fight he's got to have, you know? He's got a sword, he's got a shield, he's going to have a fight. I don't know if he actually has a short sword and shield yet, but, like, so he comes up on this guard who's just like, oh, I'm going to kill you, Link. <laughs> and so in this fan film, it's like, you could tell the people who were making the movie thought it was going to be so epic. And, what it, and, like, Link's got a torch in his hand, and, like, this guy's like, oh, I'm going to kill you, Link. And then uh, it's like the music amps up and then Link throws the torch and it like fucking impales the guy. <laughs> well, fire how, like, side in uh, or handle fire, side in? Handle side in. But it was just okay, like... so it's just a torch sticking out of his body. Yeah, but it was so funny to be, see it be like, oh, it's Legend of Zelda, that whimsical adventure that we all know and love with some scary moments. <laughs> and then it's like the very first time like Link's in a fight, he just fucking murders a guy <laughs> from like throwing a torch. And it was like, this is, this is goofy. This is actually like, like me and my roommate watched it together. Legend of Zelda. (laughs) Yeah. My roommate and I were watching it together and we just like laughed and laughed and laughed. It was so fucking extra. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) Chris Pratt and Holy Mountain. Please do not conjure that into the ether. Holy Mountain is a treasure. And (laughs) first of all, no one's ever going to make a movie like Holy Mountain ever again. Like there's just no way. Except I guess they kind of. You know, unless it's like a Ari Aster thing where like but he got to make Bose afraid, like no one's ever gonna get allowed to make Holy Mountain again unless they like have a bunch of money they're willing to like waste on it. But like Do have you I ever know seen what Holy Mountain is? Oh, it's so good. Um you may so. or may not have. It's it's this crazy movie. Um, it's made by the guy who he, I forget his name off the top of my head. He, uh, he was the guy when they talk about like that lost Dune movie that never got made where HR Geiger was doing like the concept art. He was the guy who was going to direct it. But Holy Mountain is like this crazy spiritual movie. That's like, it's visually stunning. It's like, there's that like thing that talks about movies called every frame of painting. Holy Mountain is an every frame of painting kind of movie. Um, Jodorowsky, thank you, yeah, uh, Jodorowsky is the name of the guy, um, and what it is, 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 like, it starts with this dude, he's Jesus, and he's been crucified, except he wakes up in, like, a, a graveyard full of, like, different Jesuses, and, like, they're all made of wax, so he eats, like, the face of one, and then he, like, g- goes into this weird town, and, like, there's, like, a bunch of amputees who, like, hang out with him and stuff, and then he makes it to, like, the center block, Um, where there's this giant tower and then he like scales the tower and then inside the tower he meets like 
f- like seven people who are all representative of like well, no he meets like this guy who's like next to like these two naked lady guards who like have these crazy outfits but they're like mostly naked and like he's like come with me jesus i wish but he's never called explicitly jesus but like it's jesus um yeah and then he takes jesus to like meet these people in like this weird temple where they're like in stasis like prisms or <laughs> whatever and then Whoa. they go to each person and this is like this takes like an hour um and then they go to each person and it's like a visually stunning movie like ev- again every frame of painting should i watch it i agree i think you should i think you should watch it but just okay. understand you're not going to understand what the fuck is happening um that's all right and so then i won't get i won't get into two if you're going to watch it i won't get into two spoilery but i'll just tell you what happens yeah, maybe like, i will it sounds kind of cool it's it sounds interesting it's absolutely worth it in my opinion like i watched it when i was like 25 i wouldn't want to say and like I was still okay. too young to understand what the hell I was watching, and I didn't really fully appreciate it, but, like, I kind of really un- appreciated it on second watch. It was, like, Ryan's favorite movie when I was dating her. Um, wow. But um, it's a phenomenal movie. YMS says it's his favorite movie, too. Um, wow. It's like, okay, I'm watching this. I'm watching it's definitely this one of those movies for those, like, tea-sipping, like, mustache-twirling, like, ah, yes, cinema types, but it's worth it. Like, it's so worth it. Um so he goes inside and he meets like these seven people who are in prisms and then each person gets to say hello i am mars i am venus i am mercury and then they like kind of go into like the story of their home planet and like their society and stuff like that and then like each society is like this completely visually distinct weird trippy thing that's also sort of like a critique of like our modern culture and things like there's this one like there's this woman i forget what uh planet she represents but she's like the leader of a corporation that like makes bioweapons and like they have like a sex robot that they like are prototyping or whatever and it's like everything is like you know it's practical effects because it came out in like the mid 70s or something like that so like everything is practical everything looks phenomenal there's so much budget in this movie and it's like it's so beautiful of a movie though like again every frame of painting it is gorgeous and it's confusing but you can tell that the guy is trying to say a lot of stuff in like this three hour experience and it's just it's just it's it's a phenomenal movie like it's so worth it and then like it gets weird and then things happen sounds like a like a terry gilliam joint or something it feels almost like a terry gilliam movie but it's like terry gilliam wishes he was jodorowsky (laughs) yeah Uh, yeah that's fair that's 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 kind of the vibe of it um we got more uh (laughs) we got more chris pratt things but you should you should definitely watch i highly recommend watching holy mountain sounds anyone in the chat really interesting watch jodorowsky's holy mountain it's it's i mean you're never going to see anything like it Uh, so just you should um i want to see all these things um Jodorowsky's Dune, Chris Pratt is the spiked LSD punch in Gaspar No movie about unhinged dancers. Um, Chris Pratt is Rosemary's baby. Chris Pratt in every new <laughs> Lars von Trier movie. Chris Pratt is flubber. Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt is, Chris Pratt just played the baby. So like, if you have you seen Rosemary's Baby? Uh, that's one where the baby's the devil, right? Somebody gets impaled on a weather vane. No, you're thinking of The Omen. Okay, then no. <laughs> this is a lot more subtle. Um, it's a great movie. Uh, Roman Polanski is a piece of shit, but uh, it's a great movie. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's it's very subtle. It's like all about this this woman who's she's pregnant and basically, I don't want to spoil it. Really. Oh, it's actually, okay. It, I, think. I, um, I have heard of this movie and she's like kind of is constantly being told like, oh, your kid's the devil or something like that. And then like you never actually see. No. Don't you just see her face after she's like given birth and she's looking at the kid and she's got like this horrified look isn't yeah. that kind of the whole thing is her leading up to giving birth and she's like getting very unhealthy and like getting sick and she's like suspicious of like her husband and her neighbors who are all just like overly involved in weird ways and everything's weird and then like at the end she gives birth and then the movie ends right as like the reveal of her like fears but like times a thousand have like come true and it's just like very like they don't they let your imagination do a lot of the work. They don't really. It's more like a psychological kind of like her, like dealing with all this craziness up until the thing. Um, kind of. Uh, but at the end, you don't even see the baby. You just she sees it and her look on her face is like enough to scare you. And also <laughs> they just throw maybe like a little glimpse of like 
some claws or like you see its eyes for like a split second. But it'd be funny if you just make Roman or uh, Rosemary's baby the exact <laughs> same way, except the two little like one like point one second clips of the baby are just like a half part of Chris Pratt's face. That would be hilarious. <laughs> and that's it. There you go. I'd be okay with that remake. That'd be good. That'd be kind of like how we feel about Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Man. Hey, mom. I'm hey. your baby. I'm I'm the devil. <laughs> Or I'm a demon. Chris Pratt is Carrie, the goat from The Witch, Falcor, um, Dr. Manhattan is the afterbirth and <laughs> an educational movie about childbirth. Oh god. The, the 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 goat in the witch like just whispers occasionally. It's just Chris Pratt whispering as the goat. Hey, hey um, you want you want magic powers? Just asking. <laughs> just just you know, asking for a friend. Uh, Chris I Pratt. I, I would say Chris Pratt is Willy Wonka, but they already did that with Timothy Chalamet, so it's like they've. Yeah, it's like that's already done. Yeah. They're, they're Chris pretty Pratt. Much like sorry, go ahead. The same person at this point. Yeah, Chris Pratt as Edward Scissorhands. There you go. That'd be great. Brandon, have you watched or interacted with any sort of media this past week that we have not chatted? Um, Uh, me, I watched the newest last couple episodes of Invincible. Uh, nice. It's not the season's just in, like just getting started. It's like they're doing like a mid-season break like or something like that, right? Four. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, probably, I don't know. But right oh. now they're like four or five episodes in. Uh, it airs on Fridays, but I just I was too behind, so I watched two episodes with my brother last night, and I love that show. It's great, good show. Lots of twists and turns and things you may not expect. A lot of times they they do good work. The animation's fun. Yeah, I, like I it. saw. Check it out. I saw like the first three episodes, and then just because I'm like such a busy guy and I've been doing so much shit, um, that's fair. I, I haven't seen more of it, but I want to because I mean I got that Apple yeah. or that that Amazon subscription is just sitting there. I mean I'm not paying I think for it's it. It's a good show. I'm a fan. It's funny how many uh like comedian, especially like comedy bang bang esque people are. Yeah, like, they have like, Jason Mantzoukas that... as like that one guy in it yeah, who's like fireworks character. man. But we were just watching an ep the episode we were watching last night. Just coincidentally, I'm like, okay, that's Jason Manzukis. Paul F. Tompkins was narrating something. Oh, uh, there's this new character they're introducing who's Ben Schwartz. Oh, um, nice. And uh, um, who's the other comedian that was in it? Um, I don't know. I can't. I can't think of his name right now. But, but yeah. So I guess you know whoever's making it has a, is a fan of of these people. I guess so. Rexplode? Is Rexplode the name of the Jason Manzoukas character, or is yep. that the name? Okay. That's Jason Manzoukas. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, oh, and uh, Business Father says, yeah, they're waiting until next year for the next four episodes. Okay, that's fair. I, uh, I like it when... Yeah. I like it when shows at least give me a... Like, I'll be honest, at first I was super on board with the binge model of like, oh, we just released the whole thing, and then you can just watch yeah. it in, in pace, but I'm kind of tired of it, man. <laughs> like... Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I agree, but... And also, as much as I want more of the show right now, it's like one of the shows that I feel like it's high enough quality that I'm like, take all the time you need. I won't even. I'm not even mad. Just like, do what you gotta yeah. do. If it's gonna That's... keep, if the show stays as good as it is, I don't care how long it takes to make it. Give me, give me a little here and there. I don't care. Yeah, that's how I feel about a lot of things that are like quality. Is if they're like, "Hey, we gotta take a bit more time to make this," I'm like, Psh, "Take all the time you need. Hey, hey, you work, yeah. you make art, okay? And you know, don't overwork yourselves. So, you know, yeah, do, it, do exactly. what you gotta do." Um, you know, if that means it's going to be better, then absolutely take two yeah. years. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Um, cool. Any anything else have you have you been watching, or do you got what are your what's your grade? What's a, a grade you can give out of ten, or whatever rating system you want to give for the, to the show, season? For so, to the, uh, so to, far, what I've seen, it is. So there were some real bombs were dropped last season. So the, a lot, most of what has been happening is just kind of like try to like clean up. <laughs> Like not necessarily like clean up like it didn't happen, but like no, right, I know, but like we, everybody's like in shock from what occurred. So like, how do we yeah get on our feet and continue moving in the story? And that's what a lot of what's ha been happening. Uh, but then there was just a big reveal in like the last episode that was cool, and it's interesting because uh you know I'm I'm curious to see where it goes. The characters are, are I think are pretty in my opinion uh pretty complex. So. Not as just as simple as good and bad guys, which always is 
a, a great thing to have in a yeah superhero or like that type of you know show where everything normally is so black and white so it's right. nice uh to have that and so there's some like characters that you would have no reason not absolutely hating and now you're kind of like oh <laughs> am i <laughs> a little bit rooting for them a little bit i don't know i don't know it's it's interesting interesting it's com- i like it it's a great cool show. cool 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 well that's cool um any other oh, yeah. any uh well uh, you know, you've seen me. I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring, trying to get myself oh, finally right. uh, through that. We also, as a family, we finished. I've seen the show before, Silicon Valley, but I, you know, I've been watching it with my parents, um, and, and and the whole family, like my brother, my parents, uh, and so we finally finished that show, um, and so now we were moving on to finishing off the final season of Ted Lasso. So that's kind of what we've been up to n- lately. Um. Oh yeah, I still haven't finished that. Yeah, how how far did you get into Ted Lasso? We're in season two. We got to a few like just like disgustingly sappy episodes, and it <laughs> yeah, it we turned it off, and we haven't watched it since. But I That's I'm, fair. I think I will watch it. It's just like it's we yeah. saw the Christmas episode. It was the last episode we saw, and we just were like, I can't yeah. do this right now. Yeah, that episode was. You told me a little bit about the history of it, <laughs> but before I knew that, I'm just like, this show is like <laughs> like. We, to like get a grip like what are you trying like, yeah you're trying to do but like ease it back that's my main complaint about the show like i think season one is like a pretty flawless season and like they've really had like a good groove going for that season and i think it's a well-written very funny show but like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially like i feel like season they you know season one won a bajillion awards at like the emmys or whatever the hell is the tv show awards that for whatever they do um and uh my main complaint about the show is that like it's a well-written show it's good and it's a feel good show and I, you know i think feel good shows are great i like to feel good um yeah but i feel like when ted lasso won all those awards they were like oh i guess this is our our strength we got to really like lay into this and so like season two and three both feel like they're really leaning into the like you're gonna feel good in this show like we're about friendship and we're about being nice and wholesome and etc and it's like okay but like chill out you guys come on like <laughs> right have some real conflict where that doesn't end with every episode with everybody hugging yeah and like people. like it can take a little bit longer to be resolved yeah and, and you know season three they kind of like pump the brakes a little bit on things being resolved necessarily it's more like an ongoing arcs happening and stuff like that but you can still it I was talking with Austin about this, but it does feel very much like they're they're broadcasting sort of like, hey, we're a feel good show as the episodes like happen, like in the choices of music and some of the things characters say, it it does feel like they're trying to like broadcast like we're a show for to be happy to. And it's like, okay, guys, but like and and it's a shame because like otherwise the writing is like great and very funny and it's a very well written show. Um, and, and I'm the okay with them making that show. I've just I've lost interest because of it. Yeah, it doesn't mean it, they it, can't make a show for people that want that. I just am not that guy. I guess I I guess I'm too. I don't know. I need more drama, even in like a, even in like a, like a comedy, but like plot needs to at least have some stakes, right? In some oh, way, yeah. like even there, if it's well, there like is small potatoes. They do have I, a lot. I'm not of... saying there is none, but I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say they they do have a lot of stakes going on, but I, I, I the issue is like it is very saccharine and it's it's very like again they they very much broadcast like oh, we're a feel good show and I'm just kind of like you can do the show without like kind of giving a wink and a nod every so often being like eh, do you feel good yet eh, 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 do you feel good yet and that that's that's my main complaint about the show is it's it's overly saccharine sometimes and I'm kind of just like hey guys. Maybe the music doesn't need to be like a slow, happy acoustic song right now. You know, I'm just saying. Like, maybe we can let the music not ride right now. Um, maybe I'm just too bitter. Maybe the thing is, like, shows like Invincible and stuff like that. Like, I, I like those shows too. But like, I'm also a little like, you know, there's a lot of shows that are just like, hey, guess what? These people are gonna explode, and they're gonna get covered in blood, and they're gonna cry, and then they're gonna die, and then that person's friends die, and they're gonna feel set, and you know, True. I, like there's a lot of True. shows like that, that, and I'm I'm kind of like, I'm more out on that shit too, <laughs> like I'm more wore out yeah. on that than on like on like Ted Lasso type shows because I'm just like, 
I don't know, I watched like eight shows in a row where it was just like, here's the worst shit happening to the like most terrible also, but sometimes like the most conflicted fucking people. And you're just going to feel like shit at the end of this show. We're selling you trauma in a 30 <laughs> minute, 30 minute format. And I'm just like kind of, and why do I crave it? I guess that's the question. Maybe I, I it's only something my therapist could answer. Uh, maybe there's this really great sketch that by this guy, um, who he, he, he made like a sketch about it where it's like, he's talking to himself and they're being, you know, they're being different characters. And the one guy's just like, Oh, I feel so awful right now. Oh, why do I feel so bad? And the other guy's like, is it cause like the world's on fire? And he's like, yeah, but it's not just that. It's like, Oh man, I feel so shitty right now. And then the other guy's like, yeah, I get that. Hey, did you see that show where a guy, uh, like, explodes and like it's all just a, about like 24 7 like coverage of like his family like recovering from the loss of him exploding he's like oh yeah that was a good one hey did you see that one about like the people and they just like stab every person they come across and then you just get to watch that person bleed out and cry oh yeah hey did you watch that one where it's like a guy and he's like holding a baby and then the baby melts in his arm and it's just like him going why 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 and like it's just kind of like a back and forth of that for like <laughs> two minutes i have seen that one and, and i totally yeah i agree with it he makes a good point he makes a very good point <laughs> um, yeah i don't know why there's like a maybe it's like a it's like a version of like having a morbid curiosity or morbid interest but like you feel like you don't feel like you're a freak because you're like oh it's fictional so like, whatever but you yeah still have, i don't know maybe that's where it comes from i don't know why i like that stuff but don't get me wrong. I like it too. I, it definitely has a place for me. Like I love a fucked up story, but like every show I watched for a while was, and like, that's like all the shows that were like the top of like, you got to watch this show. It's so fucked up. It's about superheroes, but like, imagine if superheroes made the world a worse place. And I'm like, okay, but the world <laughs> is a terrible place right now. Act like I can look outside my window and everything's on fire. Like, I will say not to like, not, I know that's not, this isn't the point you're making, but I will say that, um, the boys is more of that like superheroes but dark uh the invincible is a little more like like a so, like a like an interesting like kind of story that's not just about superheroes hey, but what dark? If superman was evil okay. yeah there's a lot i feel like there's more to it than that in my because the episode I, I i'm i'm sure it is the episodes i've seen were pretty much like hey what if superman was like a fucked up guy, <laughs> guy. Yeah, yeah and that is a part of it but i don't think that's the driving force like the characters are are well written and stuff and like it okay. actually is like there's like dramas and in in conflicts and, and things and I, I don't know yeah maybe maybe i'm maybe i'm just like trying to convince <laughs> myself that it's not that simple i don't know hey i, I mean like i'm not doubting it i'm just you know stop yucking my yums for for a while like I, I think i'm just a little burnt out on shows that make me feel like shit <laughs> and that's that is 100 fair yeah yeah I'll get back into it. Like it's all everything comes and goes in cycles for me. You know, I was on a sitcom cycle for a while. Now I've been just watching a lot of like YouTube videos about like deep dives onto this history of that thing. That's cool. And like, oh, here's how to make this in Blender and blah 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 blah. So that's been kind of my thing. And then when I'm done with that, I'll probably be back listening to podcasts 24/7 for a while. And then it'll you know it'll cycle back around. To, hey, let me watch like characters murder each other, and it's really sad. <laughs> um. But I just haven't, I just haven't, like, like, and, and, like, I'm not, like, actively avoiding those types of shows. Like, we watched a bunch of horror movies together. Like, we've watched plenty of movies during Bad Movie Night that are, you know, when we're not watching terrible movies. Like, we've watched, like, some, you know, movies about fucked up shit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not my... I, uh, I think that's fair. I, yeah. um, what was I gonna say? Oh, shit. It's gone. Oh, no. Never mind. Um, we got a chat happening. I gotta stop working on the Scarfield drawing that I'm just like tracing. <laughs> or not even tracing from a reference. I'm just gonna finish this I up real quick. What I'm doing with this one. Um. So, so yeah, Ted Lasso. It's fine. It's good. I mean, it's it's a very well written show. I am a little like. I think uh, it's a good show. I'm not trying a, to say it's bad. As Business Father says, like, Stomp Clap Hey Music is easy to parody. And yeah, it's, it feels very much like, yeah, Stomp Clap Hey Music, you know? Like, um, what's that one song that, like, was really popular when, like, hipsters were a thing? And it was just like, whoa, it's just, always been a thing. 
<laughs> You're describing 300 songs right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lotus says, can either of you do the excited Chris Pratt face? I don't know what the excited Chris Pratt face is, but I've already he's drawn... talking about the meme face of Chris Pratt from Parks and Rec where he's oh, like, okay. like turning and he's got like the big I, like, surprise face, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I've already drawn one Chris Pratt and that's enough for me. <laughs> I, uh, I, this guy doesn't, this guy barely looks like Chris Pratt too, but. Um, let me see what else is there in the chat. Um, the stabbing channel, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he would feel better if they were playing more stomp clap hay music when that baby melted. You got that right. <laughs> Everything would be a okay then. You'd feel wistfully happy about the stomp, the the baby melting. Um, imagine making human beings into WMBs. Uh, WMDs may end up poor. I imagine making human beings into WMDs. WMDs may end up poorly. Yeah, just in general, I think superheroes. I, I, if superheroes were real, I definitely imagine it would be more like the boys than it would be like Marvel. <laughs> you know, it's definitely how I see it. Um, it's a I'm good assuming. thing in Marvel that all the all the supervillains are not as strong as the superheroes, except for Thanos. Man, he's he's oh, yeah. he's the most powerful guy. The only thing that stopped Thanos was himself. And his glove. He's it was. Like, it was. He's like, yeah, beside, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Um. There's a DC storyline that explores what would happen if Superman broke and decided to kill. It's interesting. The archive. Ar oh, the arcade fire in Mumford and Sons. I think is exactly the uh, the people I, I was thinking of when I was trying to like oh, gotcha. specify that one song. I think it was definitely Mumford and Sons. Um. I saw like a. I saw a Superman comic once where it was about like humanity is like getting ready to colonize other planets and superman's like look how fucked up you made this planet and so then he like flies through the earth and breaks it in half and explodes it so everyone's dead and he's just like i couldn't let you guys go to another planet and that it was like a five page comic or whatever and it was kind of like okay i uh there's one i forget exactly how it goes but it's pretty interesting uh but basically it's about superman if he were if he landed in russia instead of america so like oh interesting basically it, he's like you know, just in like the American way, he's kind of like the icon in in the comics of like of Russia. Everything. He's that over there too, like kind of propagandized in the same way. Interesting. And they're like the most powerful spot now. They won the Cold War because they had Superman, and all that shit. So, I don't know, it's just kind of like an interesting like. Alternate yeah, I like stuff thing. like that. They do like a lot of those like uh, Marvel like what ifs I think is what they call that series or whatever or I don't know if that's the exact name for it but I, I do enjoy. They should those. make a movie where it's that um but they have to travel to another dimension uh to meet the other Superman and <laughs> two Superman so one for the we know and love but he's going to see a different Superman from another multiverse I think Dude. I'm I just making this term up so I don't know if it makes sense but kind of like a multiverse type thing they should do what? that I would love to see something like that for once. I love that everything is multiverses, dude. I love multiverses because then nothing matters. Wait. <laughs> and then you can <laughs> just keep making shit forever. Yeah. I, I, lo I love how I watch a movie and they're like, there's multiverses, so literally nothing we do matters. Um. Wait, do I love that or do I hate that? Wait, hold on. I well, this, ver this version of Ian in this universe loves loves it hates wait hates it but hates. if you go to universe 4308 ian there loves it hold on i'm gonna and that's go. why this is interesting because there's unlimited potential for storytelling in this world and the others i'm gonna go look i'm gonna switch the video feed with the ian that loves multiverses wait you set up a way on obs to look at the other dimension of yeah. wow all right check it out right, ready i'm gonna i'm gonna switch to multiverse ian who loves multiverses well it's a glimpse into another world hi i'm hi i'm i'm ian from another multiverse oh i still hate multiverses um no, i'm gonna i'm gonna switch back to the wrong one Okay. 
Oh man, I, I should have asked him some important questions while we had him. Because it's not every day that you get that chance, but oh well, I guess. Hi, I'm, I'm Ian from the normal multiverse again. Or am I? I didn't I'll have never the bam, 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 so I just used the reading rainbow sound. All right, um, cool, good, yeah. good bit. Turn, yeah, <laughs> what a great bit we did. That was <laughs> worth it. I think uh, so. Pick another Ian? Okay, we'll pick another Ian. Well, I'll be right back. Oh, we don't even know which one we're getting. It's just a random Ian. This is this is dangerous. Hi. I hope we get, like, Ian. I'm cool, Ian. Um, I'm Ian, who's not a dork and who is very cool. I also hate multiverses. Wow. Okay, bye. <laughs> wow, that was. That guy, he was very charismatic compared to what we're used to. That guy. Hi, I'm, I'm back. It's me. I, I didn't get a chance to meet oh, yeah. the multiverse me. Yeah. You're, you're um, not like the last guy. Ooh, nothing like guy him, was unfortunately. Slick. Was he cool? Shit, I just He's found so the sunglasses cool. I was looking for when I was on. Let's bring back Cool Ian, one sec. Alright. Getting full use out of that, that sound bite. <laughs> I'm, I'm Cool Ian. Oh, hey, it's good to see you again, man. Hey, I was wondering if you like, um... So we have the show, and I was like... I feel like it needs something, and I feel like you're exactly what it's missing. Would you be interested in doing a, a Twitch stream? No. Yeah, that makes sense, since you're cool and all. You probably wouldn't do that. Anyways, all right. Yeah, I'm I too guess. cool for that. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. Well, thanks for talking to me. Um, I yeah, feel, no like, slightly cooler by proxy. Eh, hey, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, cool, cool is what you make. Oh, man, it. that's such a cool that's such a cool fucking thing to say. Dude, you're awesome. Oh, thanks. God. Um, gosh. Damn. You, you don't gotta be nervous, man. It's, for it's the chill. rest of us, it's all chill. I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm, I'm just you're, you're intimidating because of how cool you are. I, you want to talk multiverses? I mean, I, I heard you, that's why they brought me here. Oh, do you like this? No, not at all. Uh, okay, yeah, I guess you wouldn't because you're cool. Um. Yeah. Have you watched any Marvel movies? Uh, I've seen the Guardians of the Galaxies. I, I like those. Those are pretty good. Oh, yeah. Th those those are the coolest ones. Yeah, it makes sense that those are the yeah. ones you've seen. I, I, I'm not a big oh, fan of Chris Pratt, one. though. Oh. He, he kind of sucks. At least you're not played by him. I was worried about that. Oh. Well, in another universe, I am played by Chris Pratt. It's kind of... <laughs> okay. All right. I, um, anything weird about your universe... That's different from ours. Um. Well, when you're a baby and you're born, you get a pair of sunglasses from the doctor, and he's like, "Here you go." Everybody's cool there. Yeah, it's kind of like a uh, the Incredible situation where like everyone's cool, so no one's cool. Actually, all the coolest Whoa. people are the ones who like multiverses in our universe. That's that's wacky. So you're like. Are you considered cool in your universe, or are you considered lame over there? Um, With this I'm whole like multiverse thing you're talking about. I'm like a I'm like a fence sitter. I'm like neither cool or uncool. I'm just kind of like. Oh, that's that's such a cool thing to be. Fuck yeah, dude! I thank you so much for talking to me. I, you're so cool. Yeah, no problem. All right, I'm gonna go. Okay. Bye. Bye, cool Ian. Um. Bye. Oh, uh. Want to hang out late? Oh, I don't think you can hear me anymore. Oh. I'm back. How was cool Ian? God, he was so fucking cool. Yeah, Dude, he, he is. did this thing where he was like, where he was like, uh, he okay, so he was. Uh, I don't want to butcher it. So he was like, look at, I can't do it. He, he's so cool. Oh my oh, god, man. Wish I was there. Was so cool. It's like yeah. a, well, it's like a rule where you can't like be in the same room or like interact with your multiverse well, self that, or like, you blow, blow up the universe or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Like that awful movie Southland Tales, where if you if you touch like your multiverse self, you you explode the world essentially and cause like a black hole. Yeah, we don't want that. No. Anything to be not like the movie Southland Tales. That movie was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's mo that's one for bad movie night. I should force you guys to watch Southland Tales sometime because you'll be like, "What is this?" 
I mean, I feel that way about a lot of the movies we watch. That makes sense. This is true. Southland Tales is they gave the director of Donnie Darko, like, a huge budget and told him to make whatever he wants because he made Donnie uh. Darko. And, uh... <laughs> he just and he made something ape shit <laughs> is really what it comes down to you can't get that lucky twice you know no he made something ape shit the first time but people liked it a lot yeah it's uh it's weird there's like justin timberlake and the rock are both in it and like whoa justin timberlake's the narrator but he's also like a character who he also has like a musical sequence like halfway through the movie that is like completely unrelated to everything else that's happening um Sean William Scott's in it, and like there's time travel involved, and it's like it's weird. It's really weird. It's a weird Sounds movie. Great. Sounds great. Yeah. It's about a dystopic future. Hmm. Um. Yeah. It's a weird movie, man. It's a weird, weird movie. How old is that? Yeah! One? I want to say it came out like 2006. That's my guess. Let me see. Southland Tales. I watched it on Netflix back when Netflix had everything. 2006, I'm right on the money. And guess how long it is. Wow. Three hours. Just about. Two hours and 40 minutes. Fuck. <laughs> it's very self-indulgent. That's overstaying its welcome a little bit there, there if you ask me. Oh my god. The movie could have been over by the time Justin Timberlake's doing his like musical number. It's like... Oh, it's he way sings too much. to it. As a narrator? He's the narrator, but he's got like this weird musical sequence where like he's lip syncing oh, to a killer song. That. Um, it's it's like it's like I think it's about like soldier. A lot of it's about like war and soldiers and nukes and I think it's like a direct. I think it was very uh, inspired by like the Iraq War and stuff like after nine eleven and things like that. Interesting. It's cool. a weird. It's. It's all over the place. It does not know what it's trying to do. It's, it's trying to say everything. <laughs> it kind of ends up saying maybe a couple things, but I ultimately remember it saying just about nothing. That happens um, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's how it is. Um, I like your Garfield stripe beard that you gave him. <laughs> Thank you. Time. Yeah, I was tr trying to figure out how the hell else to make this, like, you know, at all Garfield like so we we talked to Ted Lasso we talked Southland oh, yeah, Tales I randomly I was gonna say that we've What's been that? watching not very interesting I might have brought it up like a previous episode but we've been watching a lot of Survivor uh, that's oh. not a thing you haven't talked to us it's about that fun. it's pretty fun it's a good show I think I think it's a fun show what got you guys like, into watching survivor uh i don't know we like to watch reality tv and we've just been hopping around different shows okay. um so we just like to watch it's just fun to like not use a single brain cell and just watch yeah that's fair so we've been watching different stuff and we finally went to survivor and we're like oh shit this is a, this is a great reality show it's very fun it's very just like it's got it all you know everything you want out of those types of shows in my opinion um, yeah, that's fair. but it's it's fun but i get unusually or unreasonably mad at the people on the show because i'm just like <laughs> there's like there's always like somebody who's just like dragging down their team so hardcore and i'm like get up you fucking like go <laughs> i'm like i hate them <laughs> this new is it season because they're like an ex is it because they're jeopardizing somebody you like um no it's more like I'm frustrated because it's usually like one severely weak link and then the team like keeps they keep like somehow slipping through the cracks of the next round and I'm like get them the fuck out of here they're terrible Jeez. why are they get why uh, the one thing I'm only uh we've only watched like two seasons so far but the the biggest critique I have so far is it seems like so you have all these characters and there's some you absolutely hate there's some you you root for uh you know there's people that are like big personalities or like they're like there to like cause shit it's also probably why they've been recruited for the show. But um, the thing that tends to happen, at least the two seasons I've watched, which is I such a small sample size of the four, like 40 seasons of Survivor, I think there are, um, is the person who's won both seasons I've watched are is just like some background person that's like barely noticeable <laughs> because the fact that you're not 
a threat and you're not creating a thousand enemies you just end up slipping through to the very end and at the end you win because you're the least hated not because you're like the most loved interesting so it's just these weird like i'm like oh so that person that barely spoke the whole show they, they go home with a million dollars to be the way it goes <laughs> i uh so, so that's I, kind of a thing what season of survivors are you guys watching is it like the newest one uh so we watched one from 2017 first and now we're watching the newest one because uh our good friends jenna and drew are also watching it and so it's fun to talk uh, about with them now is it is it like the season that came out earlier this year or are you is there like a new season that's it's like airing already... right now it's okay. it's not over yet it's it's airing like gotcha right now because um i watch so i listened to this one podcast and they had a segment on it where like they had a segment where they watched survivor and they called it simpin for survivor and then they followed it up with a segment called busting for bachelorette because they watched the season of the bachelorette <laughs> and it was funny because like it was one person's a big fan of survivor and the other person's never watched it so it was like them kind of like and they would bring on like another person who worked like at that podcasting like the company that like was doing the podcast they would bring on another person who was also a fan of that particular show um and uh they would just talk about like that season of survivor and like the games that people play and like the meta of survivor and all that stuff um but like you know it was like fun because the one person had never seen a single episode so they had to get everything like kind of they had like a, a, a bunch of questions and it was kind of like you got to have like a, a fun synopsis of like how the show works and this and that and the games that people play games people play um and then the bachelorette one was like the reverse situation where like the other person who watched survivor had never watched bachelorette and then they like try and like you know they, they always try to like make a bet on who was going to be like the final person who like won in those sure. seasons um and I, yeah that was just a fun so like I, i've never watched the survivor but i feel like i sort of vicariously watched it through <laughs> these conversations these people had on the show yeah yeah i, I actually like bachelor or bachelorette a little bit too those are pretty fun i think Bachelorette's yeah. more i don't know which one's more fun uh, we've watched a few seasons of that too but that's pretty good stuff too i, I like I trashy know, tv just, i mean it's fun just, there's a reason trash tv man there's an excuse to turn your brain off and you know we need that every once in a while you know yeah totally um so that's fun that's fun stuff but yeah so we're what in the middle of the new season right now god damn every this of all the seasons i've seen this has the most annoying people <laughs> so, um, they're almost almost all unlikable interesting uh, i'm just like oh everyone shut your mouth hate you all i don't know who i want to win maybe just somebody normal <laughs> everybody's yeah fucking annoying i feel like um, yeah i feel like they pick a lot of big personalities and then they have like one or two normal people in there so you're like oh please win normal person and they kind of like bring at least one of them along for the for, for the full <laughs> the full sure. experience I'm okay. also this is I'm probably annoying to watch these shows with because I'm fascinated by the production side of things. I'm always like I'm always thinking like okay, I wonder how much was like how much of that was puppeteered, how much of that was just like organic. Right. And I'm always thinking about that. And it's like there's some weird moments that you're like, why in the fuck would they do that? And I'm like, I wonder if they like the producers are like, hey man. If you do this thing, they'll give you like ten grand. Just Oh, they a thousand percent do a lot of that. Do yeah. It do this shit and yeah so that's... i'm always thinking about that i'm like i wonder if that was real or not or if, you know or if that was like organic or if they told him to say it in that way or all that like it's just always interesting to me and also like the editing because like i hear like oh big time that's you know the huge. editing is also a huge way they manipulate like the moments to make them seem you know more Absolutely. intense that that more than anything you know yeah. they'll like straight up clip in people's reactions to moments even if they're not happening at that moment so that you feel like people <laughs> feel a certain way they'll yeah. reorder things they'll, they'll fuck with everything just to make it fun to watch and i get that, it it's tv not... at the end it doesn't there's no rules that they have to tell you the truth you know? yeah I, I do reality tv doesn't mean anything yeah i, I like i i'm, I'm conflicted because I, I you know i love a good reality show i've watched like every season of hell's kitchen um i've yeah. watched a lot of uh watched a lot of reality tv at specific points in my life and um like i get it like you know you want to make an entertaining show if you showed just like the real reality of it i'm sure it'd be 10 times less entertaining than what they put together but also there is a part of me that's just like okay but like sure okay these people signed up to essentially like they they know they're going to get manipulated and all that stuff but it still feels it's like i'm getting cheated now. a little bit and it's like fucked up oh you mean to you 
I thought well, you meant, like, to the both. people. It's, it's both, you know, it's, like, still fucked up yeah, where they, they put those people It's crazy, because they can, like, make you look like an absolute monster, and then you go home, and everybody's, like, <laughs> people are, like, like, it's, like, network TV. Like, you go yeah. home, and, like, millions of people just saw you however they presented you, and they can make you look... I mean, a lot of times it's people's own fault, but they can make you look like absolute shit. Yeah, make you look like a monster. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I always have been like, why would anybody ever be on these shows? And I'm the answer is uh, Instagram followers, I think. Yeah, they're trying to get clout. I think, that's the, <laughs> I think that's the only reason people put themselves through this shit, especially with stuff like The Bachelor. Yeah. You can get a money prize. That one's straight up internet clout. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a chance to like get Instagram followers. I um I did watch so I I didn't watch Milf Manor but I did watch Cody Co. Um basically like react to and summarize episodes of Milf Manor and man, show was fucked up. Wow, <laughs> I am glad I did not watch that raw because oof. We watched they, they, it for some reason and it was. Oh, you watched like horrible. it like. Oh, we watched it. Oof. Uh, the it the the game where like they. Show. They tell the secrets and then the mom's just like, yeah, fuck your best friend. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was not a feel good show. It was just like no. depressing and gross. And like, feel so weird, bad the, for the show. Sorry, go ahead. Was, everything the show did was like designed to like lean into the like depravity like, almost. <laughs> well, like, the like is tr trying to make it like, like lean into like the incestual, like. Yeah, like, like put people in these situations that would be like uncomfortable for them because it's their mom, and it, it's just like ew, like the, why are we doing this? Yeah, <laughs> it was like a car accident. You just like can't look away. It's horrible. Yeah, bad show. It's a bad show. It, it, that's like one of the shows where it's like clear the producers are being over the top evil. <laughs> it's like yeah. this. This feels weird. It just makes me think of a uh, Thirty Rocks Milf Island. Yeah, it's a. I mean, shit. It's like basically the sh the show. Like, Thirty Rock was trying to be over the top, and they. they Although you know. in that one, I think they're like, <laughs> they're like eight year old boys. Yeah, true. At least everyone in Milf Manor is uh, of age. Yeah, but it's still just it's like so cringy of a show. I I don't know. It's terrible. Yeah, it's it's a rough watch. It's a rough. Don't watch, watch it. No, nobody watch it. I don't know why. Save I did. yourself. You say you want trash TV, and then you see the trashiest TV there's ever been, and you're like, <laughs> I flew too close to the sun. I <laughs> yeah. That. I got everything I wished for, and I was never happy again. <laughs> and I lost everything. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, man, what's the worst reality TV show <laughs> you've watched? <laughs> that one. Oh, yeah, fair, fair. Well, I mean, are we talking it. like worst like concept or like just like just not entertaining um either like or bad bad shit okay yeah, so however. like milf manor is like horrible and it's a bad watch and you feel bad but yeah. it's at least like it's like somewhat like interesting because you're watching the worst thing you've ever seen um but i've watched ones where it was just like you can tell nothing interesting was happening the whole season, so the sh they just like manipulated it to create fake interest. And then, when the, like at the point that they couldn't fake it anymore, like you know, at the end, just you just realize that you just watched all these people do nothing, and you're just like, well, that was <laughs> pointless and boring. Yeah, and I hated it. Uh, so that's another thing that's annoying about the. I'm okay with them manipulating things to make it more entertaining, but like. Don't do it just to get me to keep watching. Like, do it to make the show better. But if you if you have a dud on your hands, don't, don't trick me into watching the next one by being like, next week on blah blah blah, and they're all fighting, and then that episode rolls around, and it's like you can tell everything was out of context and edited to make it seem like something interesting was going to happen, and yeah. nothing happens, and you're just like, okay. They're so deceptive. Like, even like leading up to the commercial breaks. Like, my mom watched a lot of HGTV, and they, like they would be like, oh, House Hunters, like. And then, like, they would show, like, the husband saying something, like, hey, blah, 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 blah. And then the announcer would be like, are they going to break up? Find out after the commercial. And then it's after the commercial, and it's like, nothing ever even approaches, like, that conversation yeah. <laughs> or anything. It's They all do that. So they know yeah. you're just going to turn off their stupid show if you actually knew how boring it was going to be. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, so that's the worst. 
is when you're just like you feel like you got tricked. <laughs> you're like, yeah. Well, that was a waste of time. That wasn't even that wasn't even fun to watch. It didn't even have, you know, the good garbage. <laughs> it was just garbage, garbage. It was just garbage juice. No apple core is nothing. Um, I would say the worst one I watched. Uh, I, this one time, uh, uh, my ex and I we were watching. We were like going through like different reality shows, trying to find like our next fix, essentially. And this one came on that was like My Strange Animal Addictions or something like that. Animal and it's not, addictions. Yeah, or it's like My Strange Animal Obsessions is actually, I think, what it was called or something like that. And here's the thing. I'm like 90% sure this show is entirely fake because they oh, had... No, gotta be. They had like this one lady on who was like, hi, I make like dioramas out of bugs, like scarabs. Like I, I order these like really weird rare bugs off the internet and they come in like already dead and like thing and then i pose them and i put like little like miniature sets and like props on them and i turn them into little fun things and then there's the boyfriend who lived with her who is terrified of bugs of course and he was just like oh god why do you got this thing oh god and the reason i think that this show is fake is because I'm like 90 again 90% confident that the boyfriend was played by like Sam from Whitest Kids You Know. Like it was the same guy. <laughs> like I'm I'm almost like I I feel like it was him <laughs> and he was like playing this character on the show. So I'm like okay, well I can't confirm if that's him or not. I I think I checked his IMDb page and he was credited. Um but um yeah, then it's fake if unless he's yeah. also just hunting for a house. I don't know that show. Well, he he was just the boyfriend living with the girlfriend, and she would just like get uh, the dioramas made. But he was like, "Oh, oh hey, right, wrong song, wrong show, I meant." Yeah, but, yeah. but um, I hope. I mean, I hope it was fake because like the other part of the show that I saw, like, and there's parts of the show that like it's it doesn't seem fake because there's one about it, this guy who makes like walking canes out of bull penises, and he like showed his whole process Whoa. and i was just like oh yeah no he, this dude's like straight up making canes out of bolt penises and like he had like a whole process and like gets them like stretch them to, out. Like, pad out the season yeah um and then the one episode that was like the most disturbing was this guy who like was i don't know like if it, again i doubt this show is real because this dude should not be alive but he was like eating roadkill and like spoiled meat and his entire diet was like <laughs> consisting of spoiled meat and like he like had a shack that he kept out in the hot sun that he just like had a bunch of meat in there that like he let go <laughs> bad a, a spoiled shack and like get funky and like the thing like i can't tell if this dude was real or not because like whoever they got to if this was fake Whoever they got to act as this guy looked and had, like, the expressions and, like, the eyes of a serial killer. Like, this dude looked like he had, like, human bodies next he to, like, like, the animal carcasses. He looked like somebody who would eat rotten meat. He looked like somebody who would eat rotten meat, and he also looked, looked like somebody who would kill as many people as he could get his hands on. Uh -huh. um, I know he, people actually do eat roadkill. That's the thing. It's oh, yeah. Disgusting, it, but... The worst part was... Um, Aside from watching him just eat spoiled meat constantly and like eating roadkill that he found off the side of the road and like he also hired, brought a bunch of people over to his house and like fed them a meal and then he was just like what you guys ate was roadkill and then they were just like we're gonna go. Um, They're like fuck you. <laughs> yeah. But he also like he went to like a psychiatrist or whatever and like the psychiatrist is like okay so I'm the show appointed psychiatrist and we're just gonna talk about your strange meat, meat eating habit and he had like a jar He's like, yeah, this is a jar of, like, meat that went bad and it just became liquid over time. Check it out. And he just, like, rubs his finger in it and gets, like, a big finger full of, like, the sauce of melted meat. And he just, like, ate it. And he's just, like, <laughs> just gave the person, like, a, like, just stared the person in the eyes as he did it. Like, he's like, you're next. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was, like, it was absolutely right. disturbing. Like, I am disturbed to this day. Less so by the rotten meat and stuff that he was eating but more just like the face he made when he like stared that person down and ate like the jar like he really looked like he was like you better hope you have somebody with you on your way to your car i will kill you um he was a disturbing he, individuals an individual all i can say is i'm happy that the guy who likes to eat rotten meat <laughs> has a stomach that allows him to you know what a pairing you know <laughs> yeah he, most he, he lucked out he got lucky there 
Um, but like, I have to wonder, um, you know, is was it, it fake? Because like, there's no way that this dude is alive still. If, if it's not <laughs> like this dude is dead, like he has to be dead. All right. He probably can't just get away with that forever. No, I, it, it almost like, and like, he was like ravenous for like this fucked up meat and like, he refused to eat anything else. All I was almost meat. like, do you have like a worm inside? Are you, do you have like a tapeworm or something like that? My dude, like what is, <laughs> what is going on? What's that rotten meat? Do, 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 do. Smells like meat. Kids, what'd you do What's bringing like? rotten meat? I want to meet that dad. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah. I mean, those shows, okay, so there's a lot of those, and they're hyper fascinating. A lot of those, like, this person's fucked up. Let's watch. But those yeah. bum me out hardcore. I, oh, I like yeah. to watch the people punished for craving to be like you know like people on like the bachelor and survivor and all all those and the dating shows you don't feel bad for them because you're like you wanted this man you knew you know what you're getting into so yeah this is you know, the you know the consequences of your actions but those people it's like hey look at this person with mental illness let's, let's <laughs> yeah turn those them feel into entertainment very exploitative and which is what this show out. was so like yeah so like like hoarders like it's fascinating but oh, it makes yeah. me like depressed yeah we, we did Stuff a like that did of us we did we did a bit of a spin uh stint of uh my, uh what was it called uh intervention and that yeah. show i felt bad it's about watching one. yeah and same with the my 600 pound life that was a show that just depressed me because and I, i've already yeah i ranted about that show when i was playing resident evil <laughs> like last week we talked about oh that's what it was okay <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say, we just talked about it, or you just talked about it, yeah. Yeah, but it was like, just not to rehash, like, what I said on stream, but, you know, we didn't record it and, like, post it to the, to the Draw Bomb live channel. But, uh, you know, it was just like, it would be like these people who were, like, morbidly obese, and they were clearly working through, like, some sort of trauma or, like, some sort of, like, psychological issue. And then they'd, like go to this doctor and he was like this very specific doctor who, who uh, they saw like every episode and he was like a very very short guy and he'd be like well you see you you have to stop eating uh three pounds of tater tots every day or you will die if you do not stop this and you do not do my exercises you will p perish <laughs> and that was like every episode and then like the person either did the exercises and, and got better or the person would relapse even harder and just like like almost it, like you know like spite eat and they weren't spite eating it was like again they were like mental issue was like flaring up again but like also like i think being told hey if you keep doing this thing you you can't you're addicted to it, you'll die i think a lot of people react to that by like well fuck it then i guess what because i'll die do? Bard, <laughs> i guess i'm gonna he told me i'm gonna die either way so yeah um, or I don't know. I feel like that's a response SCB sometimes to that kind of shit. And there's like a there's like a 50-50 chance where like even if it's an episode where like the person does improve and get better, like you might get like a title card at the end of the episode that's just like this person lost this many pounds. They died of a heart attack because they lost too much weight all of a sudden and also they were they were just so unhealthy that it didn't ma it didn't matter they lost all that weight. They late. just died. Yeah, it was too late. And it's like, okay, well, yeah. shit. Don't like that. It's not fun. That's not a yeah. fun watch. No. The only person oh. who benefits is back in, like, TLC or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they get some, like, help, but I mean... Yeah, I think TLC still... pays for the doctor and shit like that, which is... Sure. You know. that, I mean, 100%. That's got to be, like, the main thing. But then it's also, like... That's, that's also a weird thing. You, you, I mean, all these reality shows, that's the one thing that makes me feel bad about, like survive or something or, or like alone we watch that one but then there's people that are like they're literally starving themselves to death so they can win this prize money and like i just want to like buy a house <laughs> yeah so it's that's an why indictment. i'm out here and you're like fuck it's an indictment of america those shows how like yeah. you have to get a spot on a reality tv show about how fucked your life is to get health care <laughs> yeah you have to like actively like almost die on tv to try to win a chance at just living in a normal life normal person they're not trying to get famous they're not trying to get instagram followers or maybe some of them are but you know that's not yeah. the main goal for those people it's just like i was trying to win money so that i can 
pay for surgery for my mom. And it's like, I, okay, great. It hurts to be alive. Can we, can you help me? All right. Now look into the camera and tell every fucked up thing you've ever done about this. Uh, okay. Um, I guess one time I ate a whole old country buffet. Good. More. More. Do you want to see a doctor or not? Whoosh, more. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, so I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's conflicting. I, I try. I'm not really into those shows as much. I just like the ones where it's like, yeah. Dumb people who are like, love being on camera. So then they are given the opportunity to be on camera. Yeah. I want to see people get dragged through the mud for their hubris. Not people who are just like struggling exactly. to survive, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Agreed. I will say this latest season of Survivor has a guy or had a guy he got kicked off named Brandon and God he was the worst. <laughs> he really really did did a number for us Brandons you know. Oh man, made us look bad. God damn it, he was your ambassador. I know, and he was it was ridiculous. They were doing like the every show starts with they're all on this. I think I, I'm pretty sure. I mean you know I haven't watched that much, but mm -hmm. everyone I've seen starts with they're all on this boat. There's all this like supplies and there's usually a slightly different game for each one. But the, the idea is you're like grabbing a bunch of supplies off the boat and you have to do this challenge as your team that you just met. And then you whoever wins gets like those the a bunch of those supplies. So you have a good, great start to the game, you know? Yeah. Um, And those challenges are always it's more so you're just rate. It's a race more than a challenge because like they're not that hard. It's just the first one. It's just a matter of like. Who gets it done first so that you know you win the stuff um, yeah some of the later ones are like very physical so like you want like maybe like people are like as they're playing they're trying to keep certain people on their team that can help them with challenges etc but this was these are pretty easy challenges and it got to this one where it was the very first challenge and this brandon guy he's trying to climb a, a ladder and he's just like i can't do it he can't oh, like get God. his foot on the ladder and he's just like hanging off it and he's and the whole team's just like has to wait for him to get be done and he's just like i just can't and I'm like, just, what do you mean you can't? Just do it. Like, just <laughs> it's a ladder. It's designed. It. I'm like yelling at him. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I think that's all, that's all I got. I spent all I got. I can't do it. And I'm just, they had to like literally like crawl down the side of this thing and pull his body up. Oh man. And I'm just like, I hate you, Brandon. I hate you. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about where I get mad at people in challenges. I'm like, what do you? If I, I just like picture me being like their teammate and being like, what do you mean you can't just fucking do it? Just I know do it's not it, easy. Dude. No one said it's easy. <laughs> just fucking climb the thing. Yeah. You're allowed to be slow, but just do it. Don't just lay down and be like, eh, sorry, guys. Turns out that's just whew, too much ladder for this, Brandon. Too much for me. Um, me mad. It's, it is funny it because... I can see where you're coming from, like, you know, just getting angry at a person who's just, like, fucking it up for other people, because they just, like, suck. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. As, as... But you know they invite some of these people on the show on purpose. Oh, they yeah, They definitely sure. bring in people that they know are gonna suck. Yeah. Because it creates that drama. Um, I, I, I will say, when I was growing up, I did not know a lot of people named Ian. So, because, like, like it was a more rare name, I would, like when I was growing up. I feel like there's a lot of Ian's I hear about nowadays and I'm like, good, I'm glad there's Ian's in the world. Um yeah, but like it's more more common now. As as growing up because there were so few Ian's, like and I it's still like is something that infects like my monkey brain a little bit, but like when I see somebody who's named Ian, they are kind of like in my mind like the ambassador for Ian's. <laughs> Especially totally. if they have like more exposure because I'm just like, come on man, like I'm an Ian. Like you gotta let people know that like, Ian's don't yeah. fucking suck. Like come on man the thing and brandon's need all the help they can get right now we had a very rough 2022 yes um, <laughs> yes you did it's a very popular name but not for any good reasons so come on come on brandon do better <laughs> um yeah there's a there's a there are a lot more ians now but man I, like my name confused so many fucking teachers they'd be like uh, ethan and i'm like no Ian. there's yeah, yeah ian or ethan are the ones i got the most and i'm like no no. I knew a Levi in school and everybody a lot of the like subs would call him like Levy and stuff and I'm like, come what? on man, like you can't how is this so hard for you? That's stupid. <laughs> You've heard the name Le Levi. I don't believe you that you haven't heard that name before. Yeah. That Key and Peel sketch, even though like the Key and Peel sketch is yeah. like 
it's parroting like a different aspect of teachers like getting names wrong but like i still kind of resonated with it a lot because like i was like oh, man yes i understand the, the struggle <laughs> i forgot about that sketch but yeah that is i mean they are that's part of it too i think they're making fun of the fact that it's just like they struggle to just read like <laughs> like names like come on, yeah you, you are you fucking around you might be that'd be funny if you are yeah but it's I, do, I have a hard time believing you don't you've never seen the word levi before or something like that or name i mean i could be wrong and i could be reading too much into it i do think the key and peel sketch was sort of pair like doing an inverse parody of like white teachers who have us have a hard time with like very non-white typical american names oh, like john and stuff that like that be. because um you know it's 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 uh keegan michael key as the teacher and then like it's a bunch of white kids whose names he's reading like T tabitha balake a a ron and it's all like white kids and then like the only, the one name he gets right, right is is jordan peele at the end so I, I think it's like sort of making fun of how like white teachers who have to sort of deal with like non-white kids names tend to like you're totally <laughs> right yeah forgot about but, that aspect of it but i mean it does apply apply more broadly i think that's what what kind of makes it as like it's it caught on so much is because like you know it's not just that scenario where like teachers fuck teachers fuck up names all the time but i do think that that was sort of like a more sort of intentional message they were sending yeah, you're, you're totally right i do remember that aspect of it now i need to rewatch keem peel i love that it's I worth it stuff but i haven't watched i haven't seen them all oh it's so good man i love that show i watched it it was one of the yeah. first shows i binged during the pandemic and uh i say that a lot about a lot of shows but i, I binged a lot of shows at the beginning I mean, of the pandemic what else people doing True, true, what true. What are people doing during then? Um, I'm fucking up this. I'm just drawing Peter Griffin. I'm trying to draw Garfield if he was drawn like Peter Griffin, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Hey, John. How about some more lasagna? Nah, I <laughs> hate Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> Mondays suck. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Kick Odie off the table, and Odie's just like... Ah... <laughs> Um, yeah, I recommend watching Keen Peel. It's, it's good. It holds up. There's a lot of really great sketches. Like, there's one where a guy's like, dude, I got it. And he's like, what'd you get, man? He's like, I got lightning in a bottle. And he's like, really, man? What was, what's the idea you got? He's like, no, really? I got lightning in a bottle. And it's just like a, a jar, like, that's really bright. <laughs> and he, like, opens the jar <laughs> and, like, lightning shoots everywhere. And then he gets it back in the bottle. And he, <laughs> it's like a sketch about that. It's very funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's a I great show. That would be, be a good one to watch. Soon. Yeah, I and mean, we're making Looking sketch comedy something. right now. It'd be great. It's great. It's great inspiration. Yeah. That's fair. Holy freaking crap, Odie! <laughs> or normal? <laughs> <laughs> normal. Oh yeah, so we were gonna watch. Have you? I don't know if this is entertaining to watch or not, but I'm just genuinely interested in your opinion. Oh, my not reaction that to the much of any substance there. We don't necessarily have to do it live. I don't know how you feel, but uh, I, I'm trying like to figure out bad to the level where it's like, I can't believe they did that. It just feels so like bland. Maybe um, maybe I'll watch it, but we won't. Cause like, what, here's the weird thing is. At least on the main draw bomb channel, but I don't think it happened for the draw bomb live channel that like when I rehosted all the videos on a different channel to kind of like shift focus of the draw bomb channel. But when we first put up the episode where I made you react to the Hell's Kitchen intro, even though we silenced the video, even though we put the video in the corner of the screen sh smaller, like we still got flagged by the YouTube copyright system, and they were just like, "You guys wow. watched Hell's Kitchen? You guys, Those guys it's, are good. It's blocked and like." most countries but like I, I don't think that ended up being upheld for the new version that i uploaded i, I it might be because like youtube's compression kind of like compressed it just enough where i don't know but uh that was something we ran into so maybe i won't host the trailer in the corner of the screen yeah. i i suspect your like response to it will just be like hmm i feel nothing yeah, that, honestly though yeah that's is. that probably will be what it is so maybe we might i might as well just watch it after the the stream and then i'll yeah tell you how i feel I, i'm not gonna be like what 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 it's crazy yeah. i you know. know you won't there's nothing <laughs> that would even be better like i'd rather have that like i'd rather be that offended by the trailer 
than the way I do feel, which is just an absence of emotion or feelings. Yeah. Anything. I'm just like, oh, that's that's a thing that costs a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, <I guess>. boy. <laughs> That's going to be so worth it. I Here's the thing, like, I feel like the window for a Garfield movie to, like, happen is is gone. Like, I feel like... It's I feel like that, that they're doing it, I think. Yeah. I feel like they missed their chance. Like, if they were going to do a Garfield movie, it, it had to have happened, like, ten years ago, at the, like, at the latest. And that's, like, if, I mean, if they're did. lucky. They did. They, yeah, but, like, so they did it. <laughs> They got their bag enough to make Garfield the tale of two kitties. Uh, that's it. Film. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I assume. It was not, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Um, I feel like, yeah, they missed their shot. Like, I don't feel like a Garfield movie is going to happen. I mean, it's happening. I mean, yeah, but like, you know, I mean, it's not going to like happen in my dude. It, it's like how Marvel movies are like struggling at the box office because people are just like fucking sick of them. It's like, I, I feel like no one's going to like be dying to like no one's going to go to see a Garfield movie like people went to see a Mario movie. Like I went to see the Mario movie because I was just like, well, I don't know. This went, How often do they come out with a Mario movie since the 80s? <laughs> so I'm like, right. Not often back then. I'm, I'm thinking that's going to change in the future oh uh, yeah well i'm not seeing any more mario like, movies i got my fill yeah yeah i was gonna say yeah that one's that's enough that, that Let's one was go like again <laughs> yeah that one was like a spectacle a little bit in, in seeing it because it was kind of like i can't believe they're doing a mario movie i gotta see this because also like nintendo has since yeah. sort of built up this culture of being very protective of their ip and like you know yeah. nintendo products happen on nintendo systems or or things things you know it's like so right there was a bit of that sort of like spectacle seeing mario and i'll tell you what i saw the mario movie and i was like well this certainly is a baby movie for babies <laughs> and yeah uh, that is kind of how it feels i'm just like wow i've never seen a movie like have less of a plot yeah like i'm not even like it's not even really a criticism because it's like nailed what it was trying to do for who it was trying to do it. I just personally was like, okay, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. There was references for 90 minutes and then it was over. They and certainly that, had, that's what, that's what they meant to do, I guess. Yeah. There certainly was a toad, a peach, a Mario, a cart, a donkey Kong. You did it. You made yep, a Mario movie. Um, yeah. And when I saw it, I was like, okay, well, I'm never going to watch this movie again, and I'm never planning on seeing another Mario movie. So, I don't know, diminishing returns, like, the returns have diminished. <laughs> I mean, they, they made a billion dollars, so... That's true. They got what they wanted. Did what they meant to do. I mean, maybe they'll make more Mario games because of that. I'm good with that. Man, Mar well, they did. Mario's still there. <laughs> <laughs> and they will continue. Yeah, but the quality's there. I mean, Mario games are still like Mario games are so good. They're all they're all pretty great. So yeah. like, mm, you just keep doing it. Mario Odyssey was awesome. I loved it. I hear good things about Mario Sorry. Wonder. Yeah, I've been hearing great things about that too. Maybe I should get it. I don't know. I just don't like buying Nintendo games anymore because they're so expensive and they never go down in price. Yeah. If I wanted to play a Nintendo game, I'd have to buy a, a whole ass console, and I'm just no. I, I need to figure out how I'm gonna get insurance. Yeah, I have the console, but I'm just like, 60 bucks per video game is not it's quite a lot. what I'm willing to spend. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Alright, so I've drawn. Alright, this is my monster Garfield. I've done a demon Garfield and an angel Garfield. Nice. I wasn't going for demon, but. I suppose that's a good way to describe it. I feel like I should move my weird chibi Garfield just a little bit. Because it's like... I can also move stuff. Here, if you could make your Angel Garfield just a tad higher up. I can do that. I'll move my chibi Garfield sort of... No, it's, not, it's like barely even chibi. But I don't know, I tried to go for something weird with it. 
And I'll just move it over. Oh shit. I'll move it over here. Mario Wonder Boss. Run to both the boss. Swing your hips from side to side. Come on, everybody, let's do the Mario. Like, if you move your Angel Garfield just a tad, that way I, I don't want to block up your. Because your Angel Garfield is probably my favorite drawing on this thing. But it just like, I felt like it was bad composition to have my chibi Garfield standing just like smack dab in front of Peter Griffin Garfield. P Peter Garfield. <laughs> Isn't that the guy from Genesis? <laughs> is he? <laughs> Peter Gabriel is the... Oh, okay. I was like, I don't know anyone's names from Genesis, Brandon. I'm sorry. I can't help you on this journey. That's alright. It was a goof. I was just doing a You little goofed. Goof. I knew it was a goof. I just couldn't play off of it well. I'm sorry. It's fine, I suppose. I suppose it's fine. Oh, I suppose. I I'm gonna get. That's perfect. You could even like you could have moved it a little bit to the left to just to give it more. Sp I guess his ear would be in the way. I don't know. Okay. It, no, you can leave it. It's fine. It's okay. I don't. Just uh, I felt bad that you had to shrink your amazing drawing from my shitty, <laughs> weird Aww. monster there. Don't be like that. Oh, jeez. How do you like my Peter Garfield? <laughs> He's good. I like him. I feel like I made the nose too much. I feel like it's... I feel like the nose is a little... I feel, I feel like the nose should be the Peter Griffin nose. Just I'll make uh, it pink. Yeah, like just draw, like... Make the Peter Griffin nose, but then, like, draw... Like make it a circle, like, like it's enclosed, like. Carpet. Well, I did. I didn't like the way it looked though, and that's why I'm trying oh, to. I see. That's why I'm thinking like maybe I'll do the. The nose, nice. like how Peter Griffin has it, like trying to figure it, like. There's a lot of people who are really good at doing those like weird mashups of styles and things like or drawing this person like that, and it looks like spot on. It's, and it's hard uh, to. Take two styles and combine them. Yeah. Like, I have a hard time finding that, like, that sweet spot, you know, where it's, like, it's got just enough of both to be, like, oh, that's perfect. Hard to do. Hard, Hard to, to do. do. I also haven't, like, made a name for myself in adapting pe other people's... I do too much of my own shit, you guys. People always call their original characters OCs. Psh, I gotta call other people's characters... TC, I don't know. <laughs> Their characters. <laughs> oh, dude, that was so good. <laughs> I always find it weird when people are like, hey, look, it's my OC. Like, I get it, but I'm also like, I don't I kinda, know. I, I mean, I understand what they're saying, but I don't understand the point. Of saying. I mean, I think it comes from a, the people who are doing it are the people that often are in groups and uh, are also themselves fan artists mostly. Yeah, absolutely. So it's they have to like set aside the point that they're like, oh no, this one's something I made because like that's an unusual thing or like maybe not what. They're yeah, doing. I guess that it's I guess like I've never been in a position in my life and I can't judge because like you know it's whoever however people take their art yeah. journey that's up to them. Make art however you want. But I'm just, I, I feel happy with myself where I've never felt compelled to be like, oh, this is my OC, because I'm, I'm just drawing out my own shit all the time. And you know what? Maybe that's why I'm so, <laughs> I'm not as successful <laughs> as those people, <laughs> but um, I don't know. No one knows. Like Queens of the Stone Age. Because they have a song called No One Knows. I assumed that was the case, but I didn't know. No one knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. Okay. <laughs> Brandon. Yes, Ian. Do you got anything you want to plug? Wow. It's already 10. I'm not, that's, I guess that's unbelievable. That's, I can believe that. Yeah. Um, 
draw bomb on YouTube. Well, I guess it's not ten it's yet. Great... Should we should we save this conversation? Or it's... since it's it's nine fifty. No, I mean it's yeah. No, it's it's ten, 10 is approaching. Ten. We don't wait till after the show is over to do plugs. Okay. Um. Sorry. Continue but... what you were saying. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, draw bomb on YouTube. We have lots Whee! of great stuff there. there. Lots of cartoons, sketch comedy, improv Lots of OCs. comedy. Just, just little like shorts and little goofy one-offs. Shit, it's fun. It's fun. If you, I mean, if you're watching this show, then it's right up your alley because it's it's us. It's equally um, terrible. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's good stuff. I'm proud of it. I'm very proud I'm very of what proud we've of done what we on it over the last like, I mean, just in general, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're gonna give him you gotta give him a butt chin i feel like yeah i've realized i i feel like i gotta give him the butt chin you know ball chin hey howdy i don't know that's that's the beginning holy freaking crap i gotta eat this lasagna damn you and such i will get my revenge garfield i am od <laughs> it's funny how things that once they've just been like the horse the dead horse has been beaten over and over and over and over they become cringe to me even though they were once beloved things of me for me garfield and family guy are both things that if you would ask me at one point in my life i would have been like it's my it's like my favorite thing yeah like there was a point where i loved garfield i, 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 I have a guy. now i look at both of them and i'm like okay yeah enough already <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like i used to have a bunch of garfield books as a kid i read the shit out of them front to back constantly over and over had a bunch of garfield like i even had like a garfield book that was like scary garfield stories which weren't that scary but they were like spooky stories starring garfield and there was like a text it was like books with text and illustrations and you know it was, it was for kids but um you know, I had a bunch of Garfield stuff, and I was like, oh, Garfield's so cool. Garfield is the cat that I love. He is the comics. He is com. Garfield is comics. Um, Garfield and Friends, the TV show, is great. Um, and yeah, Garfield oh, just kind of... That was, that was when uh, they had the, the like mashup between Garfield and the, then the sitcom Friends that were Garfield. <laughs> That's the, exactly what it is. Like, Ross art. would come in and be like, hey, guys. Um, I met out this girl all last week, and she, I just couldn't tell if she actually liked me. And then Garfield would be like, oh, jeez, I made out with a lasagna last night. And the studio audience laughs. Yeah. And then Phoebe sings. Garfield and Friends. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, stop the smell of cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, Garfield and Friends had a separate show. They did about barnyard animals. Yes, I can't remember what that was called. Uh, I don't remember either. I just know they had a, a walking, talking egg named Sheldon, and he he talked like this. And that's that's and there's a pig and a chicken. All the animals you might expect to see. Yeah, they were animals <laughs> on the farm. I think it was mostly uh, the pig and the chicken, the egg. And I think there was, was a duck wearing a inner tube with his own face on it. Oh yeah, I forgot. That that's guy? that's like some like '90s Saturday morning cartoon character design for you right there. Yeah. It was like we got to get kind of wacky with this guy at least. We can't just I have like it. Like, and then the animal. little the little uh, duck on his inner tube would react to like different yes. situations. Like if he was surprised, yeah. it would be like. Oh. That's true. It was like a it was like his avatar of of emotion. Oh, I like what you do with the draw bomb text. That's good. That's good stuff. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah, I remember that show. I, I watched. I watched the Garfield cartoon too, but I remember less of that. I did. Yeah. What was really weird about the comics is that like the, before John started dating the vet. Which he started dating the vet actually like at some point after I stopped reading was that Garfield. After he drank the cat semen, I believe so. Yes, it was kind of like in that, his courtship. She was like, "I'm gonna date this guy." Yeah, she was like, "Ah, this guy, this guy's willing to drink dog semen with the best of them." Um, it was it was Odie's semen. Just as a heads up, but uh, um, thanks for specifying. 
You're so welcome. Um, I'm glad I was able to help you with that particular subject. But um, <laughs> it, it was weird. They would have like these comics sometimes where it'd be like John trying to hit on women and like he would obviously be like a creep or he would fuck up and, and suck at it or whatever. And he'd get like his ass kicked a lot of the times. But like ever so often he'd be like hitting on like people who were like jogging or something like that, trying his moves on them. And like it, <laughs> it was weird because like sometimes Jim Davis would dr draw them in like very skin tight jogging outfits and i was kind of like what are you trying to say jim are you trying to draw some some pretty ladies jim davis what are you trying to do here he's trying he's, he's trying, trying. that's kind of funny isn't that didn't that comic start off somewhat like biographical <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey, I'm, a, I'm a bum who love uh, as a cat big fat yeah cat, or i don't know it, it was much more know. grounded at least you know yeah yeah, at first, like, like at first, John hates. had a friend with a mustache. Really? Yeah, don't you remember that guy? I'll draw him real quick. Oh, I, I do. He looked a lot like John. Yeah, he right. was like, here, I'm going to draw him. Is it like his brother or something? He was just some guy. I don't know. Like, they, you do actually meet John's brother, and John apparently grew up on, like, this weird-ass farm of, like, like the most, like, hillbilly, hillbilly stereotypes. Like his 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 brother was like named Doc Arbuckle or oh, something yeah. like that. I remember that he's like bald. Isn't Doc bald? Yeah, or his dad was bald, or they might have both been bald. Or but something. like you got to you got to meet his family, and they were like they were like a pretty heavy farm like farm person stereotype. I'm pretty sure where they'd be like, oh, we're gonna go tractor fucking <laughs> or something. <laughs> Classic. Oh my god, why haven't we drawn this guy? already <laughs> for this the great because this great this thing. is the, this is what the guy looks like but what i'm realizing is i'm gonna do something here before we officially end the show um check out draw bomb on youtube by the way guys that's my plug um on this this is kind of what the guy looked like but i'm gonna do John's mustached friend john's mustache friend but i'm gonna do something real quick this is gonna be so worth it, I swear to gosh. Okay, this is too big, I gotta scale it down. One sec. Oh, this is gonna be so fucking fun, you guys. You guys are gonna shit and piss yourselves laughing. It's gonna be Chris Pratt. Well, sort of. Alright, so there he is in the corner. Oh, wow. Okay, there he is. Are we sure that those aren't his teeth sticking out of his mouth? <laughs> oh god, he really needs a brush. He needs a dentist. <laughs> it's a him. It's a him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Let's Swing spread. your uh -huh. hips from side to side. Maybe uh, Mario dies, and his spirit is reborn in a cat as friends with John. Maybe there was a yes. Garfield like series of strips <clears throat> where where everyone like Garfield came back to the house and everyone had been dead for like ten years or something like that. Whoa, it's wild! It was, it was supposed to be like a Garfield like Halloween scary story thingy, like actually scary series of strips. But you can look it up. It's like. Garfield is dead canon and they'll probably like you'll find some article talking about it and probably overblowing what it's actually about but it's like Garfield like imagines like it's 20 years after like everyone's died or moved out of the house and the house is empty and Garfield's just walking around the house empty and like sort of like thinking about the past and imagining what his life remembering his life and kind of getting existential and then it ends like he wakes up it was all a dream and Odie's there and he hugs Odie and says oh, I'm so glad I'm home but wow, how, how wholesome. I know. Happy to hear that Garfield wasn't actually dead. Uh, for how long the comic's been running, it's got to be like Garfield 3 by now. <laughs> for real. <laughs> That's very true. Garf John just keeps replacing Garfield and he just hopes nobody notices with a similar looking cat. <laughs> yeah. Gosh darn it, why do I keep getting cats that eat flowers and lasagna? Dairy is very bad for cats. 
That's true. How many people have started feeding their cat cheese because of... Oh, God. I hope none. Cheese and pasta. But I also wouldn't be surprised if the answer was non-zero. I mean, I give my cats little bits of cheese every now and then. You monster! Little niblets. I don't give them a full slice of lasagna. How could you? <laughs> This guy kind of looks like he like he's like half of Hollow Notes. He is, yeah. Maybe John is the other half. Well, Whoa, no, he's, here he's he comes. Light. He's a lasagna eater. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, here he comes. Watch out, note. boy! He'll chew you up. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks this, for dealing with us. Uh, Cyber, I hate Mondays themed <laughs> episode of the show. Uh. Lotus Clock, Bell Rocket, Business Father. Uh, uh, I, think, really I, think, I think that was it. I mean, but the yeah, I those extensive are the best ones, so I'm glad they right. were here. They're, they're the, the MVPs here. with extensive cameos from the soundboard. Uh, cool I Ian was here. Cool Ian was here. So was uh, Ian from an alternate universe. I never asked you, what's your opinion on multiverses? Like <laughs> yeah. What's my opinion? Yeah. <laughs> um, like, uh, should I do the bit, or are you actually asking me? I'm actually asking you. I mean, I... Um, I thought it was a very cool concept at first, and now I'm so burned out on it, it's annoying. Okay. Yeah. S same here. In the beginning, was... I was like, oh, it's fun. It's kind of like a, a cool way to, like, take these characters that never change and look at different versions of them in a kind of somewhat canon way, but now it's just like, everybody's doing it, and it's boring. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. Like, it was fun at first. Anymore. And now, and like, I was fun at first, and now the application is just so that nothing matters. And I'm just like, if nothing matters, then nothing matters. What's the point of watching this? Right. Yeah. I think it worked better in a, in one-off stories, or like, uh, maybe like, a more serialized show, where it's like, oh, it's kind of just like a fun moment, because the show already nothing matters, because it's like, this week on so-and-so, it doesn't, you know. Yeah. So it didn't feel like your time was being wasted because it's just like every episode is another different thing. But uh, I don't know. It's Now it's to the point where like I'm watching something and I can see it going down that road. And I'm like, yeah. this too? How is everything? Like, how we... <laughs> I get when the, everything happens all at once, but like the fact that it's still being made at, like every project, I'm like, how is this? How are people still writing? Like, why is everybody collectively writing the same story right now? What is happening? <laughs> it's, uh, it's Hollywood, man. They got no... They're just like... They see one person write a successful idea, and they're like, fuck, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that, let's get that money. <laughs> and it's always diminishing returns and, and until, like, Ugh. you know, for a while. So it's like, it's just the corporate machine chasing trends, too afraid to make their own ideas, because, like, they sink, like, a, so. a bajillion dollars in each movie nowadays, because, like, holy shit, that's a huge bug on my wall. Well, eat it. <laughs> I'm like, eat a bug. Uh, eat Gretzky's a bug. here. Hey, Gretzky. We're we're, hey, we're we're signing off. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. joining us for this uh, ending of Draw Bomb. We appreciate yeah, you being here. Yeah. I'm uh oh yeah, folks. I'm probably gonna stream myself working on some music on my personal Ooh. channel. After this, I spent all day setting it up so I don't have to constantly switch between like one thing and another. I, I got it. I got it working. I got Osseo drivers working on on OBS. So it could be a complete mess. Though. Like for all I know, it sounds like absolute trash. I don't know. Um, but if you want to see me work on some music, I'm going to be remixing the Akira soundtrack. Um, Whoa. And uh, seeing if I can make anything fun out of that. Is that for um, fun or is that for some kind of project? It's it's for fun, but it's also like uh, the Stones Throw Beat Battle, which I've participated in. I used to participate in it all the time, and now I've right. sort of like, I just pop in when I'm feeling like it. You know they're doing the Akira soundtrack, and I was like, hey, "This could be fun." I don't know. So thought I'd I cool. thought I'd see if I still have the the gift. Um, I'll probably pop in a little bit later if you're still doing it. Cool. And if you if you pop in, like you know, if you're if you're hanging out for the night, you know, I might get tired of of working on the music since it's so late, and we could we could play a game or something like that. Okay, I'll make myself known when <laughs> when I'm there. Please do. That bug is getting closer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> eat a bug. Um, is this the universe where Ian eats bugs? Oh man, how did you look? It turns out I swapped with regular Ian, and the, this whole time it's actually been me, Ian, who <laughs> likes to eat bugs. Go, I knew it. I had a feeling. 
You, you can tell like, because my like, hoodie is unzipped. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like, what was that like? I feel, oh, was, I think it was Simpsons where it was like, they go to the, the it was like a butterfly uh, effect, treehouse of oh, course, yeah. and they finally get back to a world that like everything seems good and everybody's like nice and like better than and they got the original tongues. family. And then they all like have the drinking soup with like like lizard tongues or something like that. Yeah, they they like shoot their tongues out like a like a iguana or whatever. It's like the things yeah. like you know. Yeah. There's also the great one where like Homer comes back to his family and they're all like rich and they're just like, "Hey, father, are you here for your delicious dinner?" And he's like, "Oh boy, I would love a donut." And they're like, "Donuts? What's that?" He's like, "Oh." And he runs back to the time machine, and then like it starts raining out. So it just like donuts start falling from the sky, and they're just like, "Oh, it's raining again." <laughs> yeah. So funny. Yeah, that's a good one. I've... Quality Simpsons. It's a good show. It was a good show. Yep. It was. And according to a previous episode, if you check back on our archives, is it good again? Ha ha! That's a callback. <laughs> I don't know. It's from the episode titled "Is." Is The Simpsons good again? What a, what a good clickbait. I know. I try and clickbait the episode titles a little bit. <laughs> you know, gotta play the game. Gotta play the game. And on that note, guys, the game I'm gonna be playing is making music. So, see you later. Bye-bye! Thanks for watching. Bye! 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 Bye!